My name is Christian Romero, and I am a ninth grade Algebra 1 teacher at New Iberia Senior High School in the Iberia Parish School District. As an educator, I am most passionate about creating bonds with my students that will allow them to enjoy my class, enjoy being a part of the learning process, and enjoy learning about math every single day. The students in my video are all ninth grade students that are placed in Algebra 1 at New Iberia Senior High School. The content of my lesson being taught throughout the entire video is about functions. The curriculum that we use here at New Iberia Senior High in Algebra 1 is Eureka Math Squared. The objectives that are taught throughout my lesson are to identify functions, their domains and ranges, find the input X and the output Y given a function, and use function notation to evaluate functions and to interpret statements that use function notation. Prior to this lesson, what I did is I took my Eureka Math Squared teacher manual, I took my Eureka Math Squared student module, and I got to work. Um, keeping the exit ticket in mind, I always try to make sure that that exit ticket stays in the back of my mind when I am creating my lesson. That way I can figure out which content in the lesson needs to be um, enforced a lot, which content doesn't need to be enforced that much. Um, this allows me to understand the focus of the objective that the students need to learn. Um, prior to this lesson, the lesson that we did was lesson one. Um, this was about functions, what they are, um, what functions are, what are domain and range. So with this lesson one, it goes directly into lesson two. Um, so the first part of our lesson that we do is the launch and the launch of lesson two was very much similar to what we did in lesson one, which was identifying domains and ranges and understanding that an input is a domain and an output is a range. This lesson connects to my overall goals by allowing students to represent functions and interpret statements that use function notation. The students in my classroom are a very wide range of students. Um, they learn many different ways. Some ask tons of questions while I am teaching. Some are more visual learners. So they, when I'm working problems, they're working with me. They're working through it, trying to understand exactly what they need to do. Um, the more we work problems. I try to do lots of calling on students throughout the learning process. I try to, um, you know, call out students individually. I also like to, as a whole group, um, discuss what we're doing as a class if we're answering a question. I like everyone to get involved. Um, sometimes I'll also call students up to the board and have them kind of do the teaching process. Okay, so if you look at page 23, it says representing, naming, and evaluating functions. So if one of those little golf tee symbols is equivalent to five, two of them is going to be equivalent to what? Ten. 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 So that little symbol, Aaron, that little tetrafish symbol, that's going to be equivalent to 10 because we said one of the golf tee symbols is five. So two of the golf tee symbols is going to be 10. Does that make sense? Okay. What about three of the golf tee symbols? Three of the golf tee symbols is going to be 15. Okay. Are y'all following along with me? Okay. Four of those symbols are going to be equivalent to 20. Okay. And then the little tetrafish symbol. Okay. 10 is going to be equivalent to what? 15. Very good. Okay, so we talked about the last few days a function. So in order for something to be a function, what cannot happen? Uh, the, like, if, if you have two repeat the, of the same inputs, they have to have the same output. Okay, very good. The input cannot repeat. Okay, so is this correspondence a function? Yes. 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 Okay, explain how you know. So yes. Because the domain very good the domain does not repeat so we can say each input has exactly one output okay look at number two it says find b of the little golf tee symbol so if we go back to our graph our little table here when we inputted a golf tee symbol what was the output five. Five. very good five so b of our golf tee symbol is equal to five Three is a little bit different because it says, write all values of x for which b of x is equal to 20. 20. Good. That's going to be our output of 20. So when our output is 20, what is our input? Four. four. Very four good. X is equal to four. Yeah. On the right-hand side, we're going to use the same exact 
numbers that we just had, but now we're going to create a table. Now we have input numbers and output numbers. Okay, so it says at the bottom, number five, the table you created in problem four represents the correspondence T. It wants to know, is this table a function? Yes. 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 Why is this table a function? Input input input. Very good. Each input has exactly one output. Okay, none of your domain values repeat. So who can tell me what domain values are? Braxton. Domain is like the input. Very good. Domain is your input values. Okay, Kaden, what is our range? The range is the, the outputs. Range is going to be your output values. Good. So looking at this table, we need to list all of the numbers that are going to be in the domain. So what are all of the numbers for number six? One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. Very good. So you have to list all of those numbers. Okay, what numbers are in our range? Our range is 5, 10, 15, 20, 20. Good. 5, 10, all the way up to what? 50. 50. Look at the first part of the sentence. It says Mason's function is defined by taking an integer input from what two numbers? Negative 2 to 3. Negative 2 to 3. Very good, girls. So we need to put all numbers that are between what? Negative 2 to 3. Negative 2 to 3. Okay, we're gonna put that in our input side. So what number we're gonna start with? Negative two, then what? Negative one. Negative one. Zero. Zero. One, one two, three. and three. Very good. Okay, now it tells us to get our output values. We're gonna take our numbers. We're going to multiply it by what? Two, two. Multiply it by two. So if you want to go ahead and circle that in the little problem, multiply by two. And then we're going to do what? Subtract seven. Subtract seven. Very good. You Every input needs an output. An output doesn't need an input. Why are you multiplying and then and subtracting? Because that's what they're telling you to do for the function. Okay. They're telling you what to do. Okay. okay. So they say multiply by two, then subtract seven. So we're gonna start with the number negative two. So we're gonna take our input, negative two. We're gonna multiply it by what? Two. 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 And then we're going to do what? Subtract seven. Subtract seven. Okay, what is negative two times two? Negative four. And what is negative four minus seven? Negative 11. Negative 11, good. So we're gonna draw an arrow from our input negative two to our output of what? 11. Negative 11. Negative 11. Very good. What number are we going to plug in next for our input? Okay, so we're going to say, hey, negative 1, we're going to multiply it by 2, and then we're going to do what? Subtract by 7. Subtract 7. Very good. What is negative 1 times 2? Negative 2. That's the answer. So negative 2 minus 7 is negative 9. Very good. So we're going to draw an arrow from negative 1 to negative 9. Okay, so I want y'all to go and do the next four. So I want y'all to plug in a 0, plug in a 1, plug in a 2, and plug in a 3, and see if you can get the correct output. Okay, so it says, Emma, read a book for 30 minutes. So what do we need to underline in that sentence? Uh, she reads a book for 30 minutes. So we know that she's reading a book for that amount of time. Okay, so W of X equals 200X. That is the equation we are going to be using for our function. Okay, now, then it tells you W of X represents the number of words and X represents the number of what? Minutes. Okay, because it says W of X represents the number of words Emma reads after x minutes. Okay, so think about input and output. What variable here, if you're looking at this equation, what letter, which variable is the input? X. x. Okay, so what word represents x? Represents x? Minutes. Okay, so our input is x, that's the number of minutes, so that's what you're inputting. Your output is w of x, which represents the number of words. Okay, so A says, what is the domain of w? And how do you know? So domain is our what values? Input. Input. So what are we talking about? 30 minutes. The number of minutes, right? So we're going to write domain is the 
set of all real numbers from, we said it's 30 minutes, right? That's how much you read. So we're going to put from 0 to 30 minutes. So B, we're going to take our equation, and it tells us to evaluate W of 3. So what does that mean we're going to do? So just like we did earlier, I gave you one and we oh, said M of 2. Multiply all of them by 2. Multiply all of what by 2? The, input, the, the oh. input. We're going to take our input. We're going to multiply it by what? Uh, three. So look, take go to the equation. Y'all see the equation? W of X is 200X. You're going to plug in a 3. So W of 3 equals 200 times 3. Is everybody following me? For my input, I plugged in a 3. So what is 200 times 3? 600. 600. Now, what does this mean in words? She's been reading for 3 minutes. Okay. For 3 minutes she's been reading. And how many words did she read? 600. How many words did she read? 600 words. So Emma reads 600 words in how many minutes? 3 minutes. Good. C says write all values of x for which w of x is 3,800. Okay? So are they telling you to plug in that 3,800 for the input? Or are they telling you to plug in that 3,800 for the output? Okay. So when we plug it in for the output, go back to your equation. Instead of putting w of x equals, we're going to put what equals? What number are we putting? What number are we putting? Okay, so 3,800 equals 200x. We to solve this. If I want to get x by itself, we have a one-step equation. What do we need to do to both sides? Divide both sides by what? Divide both sides by 200. When we divide both sides by 200, we get x equals what? 19. 19. So listen, what does this mean? X is the number of minutes. So, so 19, how many minutes do we have here? 19 minutes. She re in 19 minutes, she reads 3,800. Very good. Emma reads 3,800 words in 19 minutes. So X input right here. Our output here was W of X. My lesson objectives, I believe, were absolutely met by a majority of the students in the classroom. Um, everyone had a very, very, a pretty good understanding of representing, naming, and evaluating functions. Um, because our next lesson, we are going to start looking at the graphs of different functions. Um, one thing is next time I am teaching this lesson, I really truly think that the um, context problems, the word problems where the students have to, you know, here's an input, give me an output or here's an output what is the input I really think I need to focus on maybe practicing um, more with students at that point maybe giving the students an individual problem to work by themselves and allow them to struggle a little bit um, before I give them a release problem on the exit ticket like um which was in the lesson after the lesson what you guys did not see what we, the students were working on was lesson two exit ticket and what the students did while they were working their exit ticket, they worked on that individually. Um, I went around the classroom, kind of helped guide students where they needed to be. So I was able to see what students math, which students mastered the standard, um, and which students struggled a little, bit, a little bit on the standard that needed to um, get a little bit more reinforcement with the problems that uh, I had assigned for homework.